Good afternoon. Uh, I am Dr. Caroline Pascoe, and I'm headmistress at the Haberdasher Monmouth Schools, which is a girls' school and a boys' school. Now, as parents, you have a very difficult decision um, because there's a lot of schools in, in Britain, and how do you make the right decision for your son or daughter? And I think what I would like to explain today is why should you choose a single-sex school, which is very unusual in the Ukraine. Just to explain my schools, we have, when they're small until three, uh, seven years old, the boys and girls are together. Then they separate into boys only, girls only education. And then for A-level, before university, they come together again. So just to explain how the structure of the Haberdasher Monmouth schools. Okay, now why, why do we do this? Well, we believe that boys and girls, particularly in the teenage years, need different learning environments. We feel that lessons need to be planned to meet their particular needs, which I'll explain a bit later on. We believe that single sex means that we can look after the individual um, child, boy or girl, and we're able to provide gender-specific opportunities. My final point about why we do this is, oh, sorry, is for the final reason, we believe there's a lot of pressure on teenagers about how they look, how they should perform academically, um, their relationships, and we believe that having boys and girls separate takes all that pressure away. So that's the, uh, probably the most important aspect. One, another reason is the academic results, and I'm sure you've all heard of Eton, Harrow, Wickham Abbey, all single-sex schools that are at the top of the academic standards in the UK. And one of those reasons is because they're boys and girls that are separated. And research has shown that in the UK, in co-ed schools, girls achieve better 8.4% than boys in a co-ed environment. But in our single sex schools, girls only perform 4.3% better. Now that's not saying girls do worse in single sex, it means that actually everybody, particularly the boys, are doing better. And to, so to explain a little bit more about why, what are the benefits for the girls and the boys? Um, so, already I've said the top 10 independent schools in the UK are half of those are girls' schools. So, girls' schools perform very well. And it's for these reasons. So, for leadership, for confidence, and to be happy within themselves and to know who they are. No distractions. Girls like a challenge. And they also are very key about the friendships and the relationship that they have with their friends but also more importantly with the teachers. And what about the boys? Well boys, um, and I have four sons, <laughs> so they're naturally competitive and so in all boys schools the teachers are able to make the most of that natural competitiveness um, they're certainly willing to take risks and it doesn't matter if they're successful or, or if they're not, but they're willing to take those risks. Um, from a very early age, and this is this bit, from a very early age, they don't mind if there's lots of different learning styles. Girls tend to like to write all the time. Boys like to do and to talk and to see. Um, and also, boys mature in a different way. And so, oops, sorry. So I think because boys mature in a different way, we need to praise them differently from the girls. And a key feature of a lesson for all boys is this bit. It takes a rare boy at 13 who can sit and listen for half an hour. And so, the boys have a variety, they have small bits of information and then they'll have an exercise where they do a practical and then they'll discuss it in group work and then they'll do some writing. 
So that is a key feature of a, a boy's lesson. And something that I think is very important, I, I teach physics, and one of the big problems in the UK, and maybe in the Ukraine, is that there are not many women in engineering or, or physics, and there are not many men in the creative subjects. So at our schools, there are no boys' subjects and there are no girls' subjects. We have girls, we, at my school, we have the Engineer of the Year, so a national prize winner at my school for the second year running. At the boys' school, there are ballet dancers. They're, the poetry the boys produce is beautiful. They play the violin and the flute rather than wind instruments. So we break down the stereotypes of boys' subjects and girls' subjects. And I've just included some figures here at girls' schools, 75% are more likely to take maths and chemistry, two very difficult A-levels um, at girls' schools, more languages and also physics, um, the girls are more likely to take it uh, at A-level. And if you're a boy applying to universities for languages, you're a very strong applicant because those courses are mainly all women. Likewise, if you're applying to university and you're a girl for physics or for engineering, you're a very strong applicant. And certainly in all boys' boarding houses, I think this is very important. Their, their friendship groups, I think, are, are much stronger. Um, it's an all-boy environment, so the girls don't get fed up that they're playing football on the grass. Um, they can be active learners and take control. And I think in a boys' school, certainly at Monmouth School, what I really like is the way that the boys will look at you. They'll say, good morning, how are you? And there's a, a lovely environment that supports, where they support each other. And, of course, we have two schools, but we do not have high walls between them. <laughs> we do a lot of socialising um, together and um, all the activities such as music, dance, drama, some sport um, are, are together. They have meals together and we, we do all the trips together and the boarding activities. So um, I think because they learn separately, they're able to be an individual and be themselves in their learning and then have the advantage of um, socialising. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I think there is, and also with British parents, there's a concern about single sex, you know, because real world, the real world is, is co-educational, is mixed. And so if my daughter or my son goes to a single sex school, are they going to be able to speak to the opposite sex in, at university? I think that is a, a real um, concern. But the reality is that actually by concentrating on them as an individual and re allowing them to reach their potential, it means actually in the sixth form, when they join together, they see themselves as equals, which I, I think is really important. И на самом деле это действительно так, как, как студенты, ну, ученики в данном случае, они помогают друг другу и учатся уважать друг друга, но тем не менее, как вы думаете, не помешает ли это им потом а вот действительно бороться дальше, ну, все-таки по жизни? Ведь в смешанном, в данном случае, классе, например, каждый ученик, он где-то старается себя тоже проявить, но в более дружественной обстановке все-таки проявляется, скажем так, взаимо, взаимопомощь. Не помешает ли это потом в будущем? Yes, I think, I think happiness is quite a key um, aspect of, of education. If a child is unhappy, they are not going to achieve. Um, so certainly in our schools, uh, we promote happiness, uh, but it's a sort of boy-orientated happiness and a girl-orientated happiness. And, and particularly with the partial care, we can address boys' issues and girls' issues separately. And so there's not... Um, you know, I, I taught in a co-ed school before this job and, you know, in some pastoral 
uh, issues. There was a lot of leg pulling, a lot of laughing at girls or boys if an issue was being discussed. Whereas here there is mutual respect. And in terms of competition and, and being competitive and striving for above your ambition, I think that doesn't um, come from being all girls or all boys. I think that comes from the ethos of the school. And uh, we're, we're a, an academic school, uh, both schools, and um, we are, we, the staff, but also the students themselves, are not happy with second best. And that comes from the, the ethos and, and being around some very talented people. And, you know, academically we perform very well. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's good when our maths team beat the boys at a competition. That's always good. <laughs> but I think nowadays, certainly in Britain, uh, life is very competitive for, for teenagers. And as, as educators, we need to provide the young people with resilience, with um, tolerance, with um, competitiveness, without um, arrogance in order to, to um, prepare them for the wider world. So I do agree that yes, being happy and friendly is good, um, but, but also it's a very competitive world out there and we must prepare them for that. Thank you. And uh, how many people from other countries do you have in your boys' school and your girls' school? There's about, in each school, there's um, 630 pupils, roughly. And um, we have a, a, a maximum number of overseas students, so we do not have more than 10% of, of the school as overseas. And certainly um, it, it's something for the parents to ask is how many Hong Kong Chinese students are in all the schools. Um, I, it's a question I would ask if I was sending my, my student and we have a maximum uh, amount on that because having too many Ukrainians is a problem, having too many of one nationality is, is a problem. Okay. Good luck with finding a school. <laughs> 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 <laughs>